Welcome to Do It Yourself Fluff and Stuff. I am Abby Cornelius and this is my mom, Hi. Sally Whiny of Whiny Bears Repair. <laughs> my mom started making bears almost 40 years ago when I was born and <laughs> since then it has grown into this really big wonderful business throughout the years and right now what we've been specializing in is helping people repair their stuffed animals. One thing that we found was that most people just needed their teddies and stuffies cleaned, right? <laughs> and so we help clean stuffed animals, but we also wanted to help you do it at home. We know not everybody is comfortable mailing their stuffies and sometimes little kids can't even imagine them being out of the house. So if that feels like what you're going through, then you are in the right place and we are here to help. Um, so go through all of the videos, uh, start with step one, which is identifying your fabric, and then we will take Take you on the journey from there but our hope is to get your stuffy clean and back in your arms as quickly as possible and teaching you how to do that for the years to come let's review some of the supplies that you need when it comes to cleaning your stuffed animal. I've got a few basic ones in front of me. If you don't have these at home, that is okay. We have links below where you could purchase them through Amazon, but these are pretty basic um, essential tools when it comes to repairing, sewing, so on and so forth. So first and foremost, if you are wanting to clean your guy in the washing machine or hand washing them, we highly encourage that you remove the fill or stuffing that's inside the stuffed animal prior to washing it so that you don't have any water that gets inside that can be really hard to dry and can sometimes create mildew. Also, if your stuffy is really, really loved, chances are he could use a new fluff. He could use a little bit more stuffing. So this is a great time to go out with the old and in with the new. We'll cover how to open them in another lesson, but here's what you're gonna need to make that happen. You're gonna wanna grab either a pair of little Fisker scissors, we love Fiskers, or a seam ripper. So we're gonna find a spot, we'll teach you how to find a spot in the animal that's already a seam that exists, and how you can open it up and use that as your uh, opening to unfill and restuff after washing and drying. We also encourage getting a wool brush Again, link below. These are great for you to use on your stuffed animal throughout you know, the life of having a stuffed animal. Every couple weeks, you could brush it just like you'd wanna brush your own hair. You might wanna brush your stuffed animal. It helps them get refluffed and also helps take out debris um, or anything that should get caught up in their hair and fur. You're gonna need a needle and thread. We encourage using button thread. It's a thicker quality. It'll be more durable and it'll make sure that that seam that you sew up at the end stays secure. And then as far as needles go, again, we have a link below to sizes that we recommend. Some of these in here are a little too small, but this, um, this size is kind of like my favorite. I don't know if you can see that. You don't want them too big because it's hard to maneuver. You don't want them too small because it's hard to thread the eye of the needle. So this is a, I'm going to leave this one out. That's a good size for me. We also have pliers here. If you have stuffing and hard to reach places within your stuffed animal, you can use pliers. Not essential, but can help when time, um, when you get into a situation where you may need it. A stuffing stick. You can use any stuffing stick. We've actually even used chopsticks throughout uh, some of the times at Whiny Bear's but these help you get to hard to reach places. So if you're trying to get the super fluffy fill into like the tippy tops of fingers or toes or even this little nose, sometimes you need a stuffing stick. And then let's talk about fill items. So when you open up your stuffed animal, which we'll, like I said, we'll cover in another video, you may find all kinds of interesting materials inside. We only refill with two key materials. We refill with polyfill. This is a giant box. This is a 10 pound box. We probably go through 60 pounds a week at Whiny Bears, which is nuts. So you don't need this big of a box. You probably just need a little bag that you can find at your local craft store or in the link below. And then we also use pellets. So if you can see that, these are little pellets. These are what are normally found. This guy doesn't have any. Um, Especially if you have like Thai beanies, they use these a lot in the hands, feet, and sometimes in the butt. These are just little, um, little plastic beads. If you have them in your stuffed animal, save them and you can use the ones that you saved to replace. These were actually taken out of a stuffy that we're saving to, to use as a replacement. Um, or again, you can buy these if you want to add extra. Some kids especially love that, that feeling of the heaviness of a stuffed animal stuffed with beans. 
Okay, that covers the essentials that you need to do the opening and closing and stuffing of your stuffed animal. We will cover what materials and supplies to use when it comes to cleaning your stuffed animal in each of the individual videos about either spot washing, hand washing, or machine washing. All right, move on to the next video, which is truly step one, identifying your fabric, and we will see you over there. Step one in cleaning your stuffed animal is identifying what type of fabric your stuffed animal is made out of. Once you identify what fabric it's made out of, then it will determine which way you will clean your stuffed animal. So there are three main fabric groups for you to be mindful of. The first is probably what you're most familiar with, which is a plush stuffed animal. So these are your Build-A-Bears, your guns, your ties, those kind of stuffed animals, which are most frequently made in the last 10 to 20 years. These are great for machine washing, but machine washing with instructions. So if this is the kind of stuffed animal that you are looking to clean up, um, please click on over to the machine wash video. The second type of fabric that you'll want to uh, keep an eye out for is rayon. So rayon is um, like Huckleberry Hound here. Rayon is a material that needs a little bit more care and consideration. It's typically an older type material as well. So you're going to want to go forward with a hand washing on this. So if this is the kind of stuffed animal you have, please go on over to the hand wash video. The third style of fabric to be mindful of is an actual true animal uh, for like a wool, alpaca, or mohair. So this vintage teddy right here, he is a mohair teddy bear. Um, and then you can identify that as one, it feels different. It feels um, more like real hair versus a synthetic fur. And also if you are able to open up your teddy um, or stuffed animal, you'll see that the back of the material has more of a weave to it um, because again, it's real fur. So those are the three things you wanna keep in mind. If you have a mohair or real fur bear, that's gonna require spot cleaning and I want you to jump over to that video. All right, see you in the next lesson. All right, hi, welcome back. We are going to show you how to open up your stuffed animal. We encourage that you Start with the back. This is a really good, easy, clear seam for you to use when you're going to open up your stuffed animal. So again, this is um, this is Spots. This is my daughter's lovey. She knows that I have him today and that we're going to give him a bath. So he's long overdue. I don't think he's ever had a bath. So my daughter's five. This was given to her when she was born. Um, but the last two years, it's been her nighttime buddy. So he's definitely got a little bit of love on him and he certainly could use a bath. So what we're gonna do is if you look here, you can see that there's clearly a seam in the back. If for some reason your stuffed animal does not have a seam on the back, um, that's very rare, but it can happen from time to time, you could use a side seam, but you want somewhere where you can get a good couple of inches to open up to make it easy to take all of that stuffing out. So I'm gonna show you real quick, I'm gonna use the seam ripper. I like to start with a seam ripper instead of scissors because scissors sometimes will inadvertently cut your fabric. And although that's okay, you can always sew it back up. I like to make sure that we're not cutting fabric and that we're truly just getting a seam. So I try to like pull this apart as much as I can. And you can see there's light, clean, beautiful fur in there, which means I'm in the middle. I stick the pointy part you can see on here, there's a very distinct pointy part. You stick that in the seam and then this little hook part will rip the threads. So I'm just gonna go real quick. I'm gonna try to get in here and get a seam only, not fabric. And there you go, you can see he opened up. It just popped one of the threads and then it really easily opens. Now, Build-A-Bears are, are great because they're built in with that thread that the person at Build-A-Bear actually ties for you and it's typically a different color. Uh, like you can see here, this is brown. Um, but they also have a really good stop and end point. So you do want to be careful when doing any other plushie that's not a Build-A-Bear that you don't rip up too high or too low. You really just want to get a good couple of inches like what you see here. And then I know this part can feel a little crazy, right? Because you don't want to see your stuffy <laughs> all ripped open. So maybe don't do this part in front of your kids if it's your kid's <laughs> stuffed animal. They don't always love seeing this. And then all you're going to do is you're just going to start removing all the stuffing. Now, again, this guy has been well loved 
but he's not super, he's not super deflated. So we're going to just kind of start with the belly, take all the fluff out. Oh, now look, he has a heart in him. So I'm going to want to make sure I set that aside and save that so we can put the heart back in. Uh, you don't want to get that lost in what you're going to throw away because I am going to throw away all this polyfill. Um, part of the reason, like I mentioned in an earlier video, why you want to throw away the fill is because it may just be deflated. It's lost its super fluffiness. This actually isn't so bad, but it's also kind of... Um, kind of gross <laughs> I'm being completely honest we do a we do about 30 plus stuffed animal cleans repairs or restorations a week and we find all kinds all kinds of material inside these stuffed animals and most of the time it it's it smells it has an odor if you um tried to wash it in a washing machine with stuffing in it which we discourage sometimes it can get moldy so we really like i said highly 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 encourage removing all the stuffing so you can see i've got an empty belly now and now i'm just kind of going into the limbs one by one to remove everything and if i get to a point where um one of the limbs has a hard to reach place which i won't have on this guy but if i did that's when i could use my pliers but i really just want to make sure that he is empty of all of his fluff because this particular guy will be our demonstration for machine washing and if he had any leftover stuffing inside of him in the washing machine it will kind of come out and it can get stuck in the fur and it just makes a little bit more work for you after the fact all right i'm going to fast forward to the end and show you what he looks like completely empty. all right so spots is all empty now so i got all of his stuffing out of him you can see all he, he's totally empty this is back to kind of the shell what you what you pick out at build a bear in the bin <laughs> before you fill it with stuffing and that's the step that you want prior to machine washing now we do have people that ask us all the time can't i just throw my stuffy in the washing machine and the answer is yeah, but <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. If you just do it like in a normal cycle, um, we've had a lot of people who have sent us stuff where the fabric has changed or the stuffing got like misplaced or lumpy or clumpy or they felt like they just couldn't get it dry inside. So yes, you know, for some people that works, you can just throw them in, when it's this kind of material, you can just throw them in the washing machine um in like a you know garment bag or a pillowcase but we highly recommend that you do take that extra step of removing the stuffing and that also allows you to refill them back to their normal lovable self so that they're not all flat anymore okay so this is flat spots and next video we will show you how to put him in the washing machine and what that looks like and if your stuffed animal was rayon or mohair you can for mohair, do not open them up, but if it was rayon, you can open them up and remove it, and then you can move on to the hand washing video next. All right, bye, see you. Show you about the cleaning in the washing machine today. Now, you might have the tendency to have more than one stuff that you want to work with, but I would just do one at a time because really, it's not you know that expensive and the uh, ability to work with one at a time could save you a lot of time because things can happen like it could uh, fur from another stuffed animal could get on this stuffed animal so one at a time is how I would do it even though you might be tempted to throw them all in there and wash them now the other thing is is you want it to be very gentle because because you don't want to beat it up but you want to have enough to clean it and some of these stuffies get very very dirty some have little slobbers on them some have ink marks on them each thing that it has there's different ways to clean it now i use basically for my start you know if anything else goes wrong then i work at other things but i usually take a pod um, with oxyclean in the tide pods and we'll have a a place where you can get those and i just throw one in and then i have a um Mellow brightens. These give you oxy also, and it's safe, color safe. So I actually add one of those too to bring out the brightness and not to uh, run. Now and you can use that on all colors, all colors, even black, and it'll bright it up. Right. 
Now you don't want to use hot water because it'll do two things. It'll shrink the material if it has that um, tendency and we never really know if the material is shrinkable or not until it shrinks because we don't know all the fibers that are in the fabrics that we're, we're working with. So I tr always do it on cool. Oh, sorry. Do not ever dry your stuffed animals. <laughs> My dryer decided to tell me it was ready to dry. So anyway, um, I usually, now it also depends on um, if it's really, if it's like a jean material or, or something really heavy duty, it wouldn't hurt to wash it on heavy duty. But basically I do delicates. And if the delicate doesn't work, then we can go somewhere from there. Because it's all trial and error because every fabric is a little different. That's why you want to make sure that you're using, that it's a poly um, type of fabric. This is more of a rayon. This might bleed if I would throw this in the washer because it's black and white. Only way I would know if it would bleed if this I threw it in and it bled or if I make part of it wet and it bleeds. So I really don't want to do this. This would be one that I would take apart and hand wash and send to myself. Not to, to fix instead of you. Send the wine to, bears. Yeah, send don't it, do it yourself. Yeah, don't do it, yeah. yeah that's a don't You're do it. You're not going to send it to yourself. Right. So anyway, I just put it in and I and I turn it on um, delicate. And cold. And, and cold and small load. Okay. Um, now, each, each washing machine might be different, but I would always chart, start with the most delicate. So I've got spots all stuffed up and what you may have saw me do in the fast version is every time I stuffed a part of him, I kind of felt it to see, does it feel like, you know, what the firmness or softness that I think my daughter would want in this case. Um, also feel, feeling down to the ends of the fingers and toes. And I had a big clump here that I just, you know, stuffing's really cool. You can just kind of like smoosh it and it moves around. Um, I'm not loving how soft this one top of the finger is here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little glob of stuffing. I'm going to stick it right near the arm. And then I am going to use this stuffing stick to kind of like weasel it down into that tippy top of that finger. So I'm just kind of going along the edge of the fabric getting it down in there. Sometimes it's hard to fill those spots from the beginning. Sometimes you need stuffing behind it and then kind of sneak it around the side. All right, so that feels much better now. And then his little shoulder's a little loosey-goosey there. So now I'm gonna grab a little bit more stuffing, go right up in his shoulder, and now that feels really good to me. Now, remember, he is a Build-A-Bear and I took his little heart out. So before we go on to how to sew him back up, magical floating hearts appear and you just put this inside your stuffy make sure it's in there um i know my kids what do they make them do at build a bear you have to like kiss it put it to your heart say a say a wish or something so we're gonna do all that stuff make sure it's got good mojo stick it back inside spots and catch us in the next video where we talk about how to sew up the back i know this can feel intimidating if you're not a sewer but we will walk you step by step how to get it done all right see you over there Okay, we are gonna talk about stitching up the back of your stuffy. Now, before I actually do it, I wanna walk you through kind of instructionally what you're gonna do. So you need your needle and some thread. In terms of length of thread, just kind of go like an arm's length, like from, the, from your finger to your shoulder, that should be plenty for you. And then you're gonna take your needle, so this is like Sewing 101 if you're not familiar with um, the ladder stitch, that's what we're gonna be using here. So you take your needle, if you can see it here, and you're going to thread the needle, which means you just take the thread and you go through the eye of the needle. Of course, I'm under camera now, so it makes me nervous. Here you go. So we've got threaded needle. Pull it so that it's double 
strong. Some people like to sew where it's a single, you know, thread. For sewing up a back of a stuffed animal, you really want it to be as durable as possible. So double the thickness of your thread, double it over. And then you're gonna wanna tie a knot in the bottom. So just simply grab, do a knot. And then I like to do it actually three times just to make sure it's super secure. Also, if your material is really stretchy, one knot will just pull right through. So you're gonna to wanna to do at least three to get a good um, catch with your, with your needle and thread. So before we go into the stuffy, I kinda of wanna walk you through this diagram here. So a ladder stitch is basically that. You're stitching in a ladder formation. So you're gonna come in on the inside underneath of the fabric, okay? This is the only time you go under the fabric. So you're gonna come, you're gonna start by going under the fabric, come out here, and then go up and out on that side, up and out on the other side, and you just keep laddering back and forth, pulling tight along the way, and it will zip that back up really quick. So watch real quick, I'm gonna make sure you guys can see this okay. So I'm gonna go to the very top of the opening that I created. I'm gonna go underneath, with my needle, stay within like a quarter inch of the seam, and then I'm gonna pull it and I'm gonna make sure that that knot doesn't pull out. This is what makes sure that the stitch stays secure. And again, this is the only time I'm going from inside out. Now I'm gonna go on the opposite side, down and up, and pull over to the next side, not far off of where that last seam or thread came through, down and up, and pull. Same thing, down and up, and you're just laddering back and forth, keeping those stitches relatively close together to minimize the space between them. And you can see each time I pull and it gets it nice and closed and tight, no stuffing sticking out. We'll just do a couple more here. And you're gonna wanna go a little bit past the end of your opening just to secure that it's fully closed. So I'm gonna go like two little stitches past where the end of that opening was, okay? And when I feel like I've covered the whole area, I'm gonna pull it tight, make sure no little strings are sticking out. Sometimes with a double thread, you gotta pull one and then the other just to make sure you get them both through. And you can see there, you sewed up nice and firm. Now, I can't just cut this or he'll just pop right back open. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is right where this thread comes out, go under and out very, very close on either side of that thread. Pull it through, but not all the way through. So you have a loop, I'm gonna make a knot and pull. And then because I know my daughter is really rough with her stuffies, I'm gonna do one more just to make sure we're extra tight. So again, I got a loop, I'm gonna go through and this is making a knot. So now I have a double knot at the surface here. Again, I don't wanna cut this because then I just have a thread hanging out, right? So I'm gonna take my needle I'm gonna insert it right next to where that double knot is and bring it out somewhere else in the stuffy so that you're burying that thread within the stuffed animal, within the stuffing. And then I'm going to cut this thread as close to the fur without cutting a hole in the fur. And we're good. So now he's all stitched up and that's a ladder stitch. So feel free to watch this as many times as you have to if you have any questions. So we'll walk you through step-by-step step and then we'll have the instructions down below as well. Watch the next video where we talk about brushing and if you want to add a bow or something to make your stuffy feel just like new. All right, we are back with spots and we have our brush. So again, we talked about this in the supplies section. This is, I think they're called wool brushes. This one's kind of big. There's smaller ones. There's actually even little tiny finger ones. Um, I'll show you a couple other sizes. Do you have a finger one over there, Mom? Somewhere. Here's a smaller one. This is what we use a lot, pardon the strings. Um, but anyway, you just take these, take these brushes and be careful not to brush um, the eyes because your eyes are probably plastic. You could scratch them. Also, um, just be careful of any material like the inside of these ears that, you know, if that catches that, it could tear it. So you wanna just use this on the fur portions of your stuffed animal. And you can see really quickly, and I'm kind of, I'm rougher than you probably think that you need to be, but you can be. And you just kinda bring it back to life. I'm gonna switch to this one because that one's a little big for this bear, her dog. Is he saying ouch? <laughs> no, he's okay. 
So I'm steering clear of the eyes. Getting his belly. This is going to bring him back to like factory new. Um, it really gets out all of the extra little fur balls that may have formed up during the washing and drying. No Any little strings. Okay, so we finished brushing him up, getting him back to day one, brand new. We were careful with areas that could tear like the, uh, the eyes could scratch or these little soft flat type fabrics could tear. And then at Whiny Bears, we send every stuffy home with a new bow. It's just one of the things that we do to let them know how much we cared about them and something for them to just feel a little shiny and new. Everybody deserves it. It's like when your dog goes to the groomer and they get a bandana and they feel super cute. Let your stuffy feel super cute. Get them a new bow every once in a while. See if I can do a bow upside down. I sure can't. We're going to turn it around. All right. There we go. Spots is good as new and ready to go home to meet his owner later today. I hope you guys found this helpful. We cannot wait to see your own DIY fluff and stuffs. Please uh, tag us at Whiny Bears Repair or hashtag Whiny Bears Repair on social media so we can see your stuffy looking good as new. Bye for now.